Is photography a skill? Or is photography a talent? That is the question of today. That is the question. Being a photographer takes more dedication. Sorry, siren. <sighs> Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Welcome to Behind the Picture. You know me, I'm Cardi. We're getting into it straight off the get. Being a photographer takes creativity and imagination. An eye for detail, patience, flexibility, passion, people skills, design sense. It also takes technical ability, equipment, knowledge, skills understanding and more patience you can treat photography mathematical and just use the rules of composition the rules of business and just make it work right maybe welcome Devin. truly photography is a balance of both skill and talent the best have both some have a stronger talent and the photography comes easily, but they have to work a little bit harder on the technical skill. Ooh, some of us have the technical side on lock, but seeing photographs, they find a little bit harder to do. One can't work only on the skills of photography without really, truly having the talent. Not everybody is supposed to be a photographer. Just like not everybody's supposed to be an aircraft pilot or an NFL star, not everybody's supposed to be a photographer. Making a living at photography isn't for everybody. It just isn't. Making a living at photography is for the ones that have both skill and talent and the passion, the obsession to improve and progress and make photography a part of your world. There's no dabbling in professional anything. Anyone making a true mark in the world of photography, they're obsessed. Maybe you just want to make better photographs. Maybe you just have a passion for it. You maybe have a talent for it and you want to learn a little bit about the skill side. Maybe you don't need to make money from your photography because you got money and all that stuff on lock, your job, a job that you love, and maybe you just love photography. And if that's why you found me and found this stream today, that is a beautiful, beautiful place to be. With the invention of digital photography, so much of the necessary skill that it took to be able to visualize a photograph, be able to visualize a picture, that was taken away. It was g digital photography literally gave you your photograph the second that you took it. You get to see your picture right there on the screen. Soon after, we put a digital device that has a 4k video camera and the best camera that's ever been in everybody's pocket to everybody wow photography has come an incredibly long way <sighs> F 
photography is easy, right? Everybody who has an iPhone in their pocket's a photographer. Putting an iPhone in everybody's pocket, that took skill away, right? Photography is super easy. Imagine, I started taking pictures when I was 14. I didn't see a photograph on the instant that I took it until I was 34. That's 20 years of photography for me, basically seeing photographs in my head and capturing them on film and knowing that I got it, but the gratification that you would get after the fact of seeing your photographs hours later, days later, sometimes weeks or months after you took them. But I also can say with 100% surety, digital photography made me better. Seeing my own images as I took them allowed me to already use my existing understanding and knowledge and push it even further. I feel like I've always had a natural talent for seeing things and being able to capture them. And I learned that I had skills for that when I was 15 years old. By the time I was 17, I decided I'm going to be a photographer. Once I realized I had talent for something, my life was shaped to hone that talent, harness it and turn it into a career. Because I discovered my talent so early, I started making money with my camera near my 20th birthday. Whew. I think enough time has passed, honestly, for that, for that phase of everybody with a camera thinking that they're, they're a photographer. I think enough time has passed. <sighs> the invention of digital photography has also brought so many people to the realization that they actually do have talent for photography. They do have talent. But many of them just lack the skill set to be a pro or lack the skill set to know how to make money with their camera. <laughs> Obviously, we're talking about making money with their camera, silly. <sighs> That's why you guys found this video. That's why you guys are Googling, is photography a skill or a talent? Really should ask yourself, do I have the talent to be a photographer? <sighs> do I have the passion? Being a working in demand photographer is a lifelong obsession. But if you're obsessed, you could make it happen. There's no fast track to anything. There's no fast track to being a famous musician, a famous artist. Being a working in demand photographer is a lifetime goal. The thing that's amazing is photography is for everyone. It knows no race, it knows no age, it knows no gender, it knows no religion, it knows no language. Photography is for everybody. Cameras don't make photographs any more than paintbrushes make paintings. They're literally just a tool for the operator. Even a gifted person, though, needs to hone their skills with practice and dedication. <sighs> just like how talented writers have to learn how to weave a story through imagination, life experiences. Photography woos and weaves a whole loo of words, of feelings, of expressions in a single frame. <sighs> Hope you guys are happy to be here because I surely, surely am happy that you guys are here. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in today.
when we discuss skill, usually we're thinking about the ability to control aperture, shutter speed, ISO, white balance. Obviously, the use of a camera, indeed, and the ability and knowledge of how to manipulate camera functions is very important when it comes to understanding photography. But the usefulness of this ability is sometimes not paired correctly with the drive to correctly utilize those skills. Is that the end of that photo set? Let me find another. You could know how much, you can really know as much as you want about how beneficial uh sorry about how beneficial it is to have a half pressed remote shutter or a focus analyzer <laughs> but if you have no artistic talent creativity or appreciation for light and it's absolutely bewildering properties then it's kind of difficult to become a great photographer in my 100 percent 30-year career i honestly believe that photography is both a balance of talent and skill and it is 100 percent mixed in with absolute obsession there is no photography that you see that moves you, that makes you go. <gasps> there is no photography that you see that makes you feel that way that isn't created by somebody who is utterly obsessed. So please, in comments, leave your thoughts. Let me know whether you think photography is a skill or a talent or both. I'd really appreciate to hear what you guys think. Feeling good? Welcome everybody for being here. Thank you. Devin, Carl, welcome. Julia, Legovska, welcome. Nate Stark, welcome. L Dog, welcome. Welcome, Sam McRae. Welcome. I hope you guys are having a good day. I hope you guys are feeling good on this lovely Sunday afternoon. It is uh, rigid in downtown Toronto. It's not, it's not nice. I don't like it. I don't like it at all being this cold. I don't think it's fair for me to live in Canada, but hey, I do. Guys, I'm so glad you're here. Obviously, in case you didn't know, I'm Cardi. I'm your friendly neighborhood obsessed photographer. Dropped a video recently called, um, hey, Emerging Pros, I made this for you. It's uh, seven key steps to getting your first paid photography gig. I put a lot into it and I really feel like I came through um, as an editor on this one. I really feel like I, I, I worked it, you know? You guys know also I have a Discord. In my Discord, all you need to do to join my Discord is type command Discord in chat. You'll get the Discord link. The Discord is where my viewers share photographs with me to view, review, critique, and help them get to the next level. And um, it's a great place. I have a very amazing photography community. It's the fastest rising photography community here on YouTube. And um, it's a good place. So hope you guys are happy um, and joining and being a part of it. Um, I hope you guys are happy is kind of a sidebar, but please join, be a part of it. Um, Father Howie, welcome. Glad you're here. And thank you for sending that snow to us from Winnipeg. Cheers. Appreciate you. <laughs> Appreciate you. All right, guys, let's get into this week's inspiration. 
Now, I have to tell you, one area of photography that is not my strong suit is street photography. Like, I'm, I, 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 this is, this is the vibe. I'm good at street photography as long as I'm not in my town. Because if I'm in my city, I just don't find it stimulating. I don't f like, I just see these streets over and over again every day. And it's that when I get inspired is when I get on a plane and I travel and I go to a faraway land and I get off this plane. And that's when I really feel like, oh, everywhere I look, I'm inspired everywhere I look. And, and then funny, when I come back, when I'm back now in my town, in my city, my town, like fucking 10 million people, when I'm back in my city, I'm inspired again. I feel good again. I feel like, yeah, okay. I li and, and I'm inspired again to make the photographs that are of the things that I see every day, everywhere, you know? I had to do some things to change that because I'm not currently traveling. I'm not currently on a plane. I'm right here at my desk creating content, but I still need to be inspired when I go outside and it's so cold. So how, how do I stay inspired to go outside and be like filming myself while I'm vlogging? Like, how am I doing that? No, not like you, yo. Anyways, um, she's a trip. Uh, I, I, I'm just, I'm really trying. So what I did was, uh, I bought a lens, and um, I'm very happy. Ooh, I almost burnt my hoodie. <laughs> Fuck, I don't usually have a candle here. I bought, um, I bought a lens. I bought a little. Look, I, I can't even. I gotta show you. Look at this lens. And I'm gonna show you what it is. Look, look, it is a 16 millimeter, 16 millimeter lens. Okay. Look at this. Okay. Do you guys want to see the world's smallest lens cap? No lie. Okay. You're not ready for this. It's the world's smallest lens cap. Look at this. Look at this. That's a lens cap. Are you kidding me? It's the world's smallest lens cap. This and how wide 16 millimeters are folks oh my god i had to inspire myself here so i'm going to give you guys a little bit of a view as to like how wide 16 millimeter is and how can i do this accurately what if i put my hand like this and you see how big and then i switch cameras and then i show you how ha how close my hand was to the lens and how much of my hand you see in frame also let's look at how close you can go to focus you see me here in focus in the lens you see that you want to see how close i am look so um yeah this is the new toy and as we have a gaze at some award-winning street photography we are going to talk about how this lens really has the potential to truly take my street photography to the next level and also not just my street photography like what i'm really what i'm really hoping to do is make amazing video content as well because I know the videos that I'm making and the type of videos I'm making vlogging being on the street shooting it's necessary I had to get a new toy and I really thought to myself like how long has it been since I've bought a lens how long has it been since I've actually bought a lens. And I thought, well, when was I sponsored by Canon? 
I was sponsored by Canon from 2014 to 2016. At that time, Canon Canada gave me lots of stuff. By the way, I was sponsored by Canon before Peter McKinnon. And um, I told Canon all the things that they needed to do. And um, like I wrote a Jerry Maguire manifesto and very much like Jerry Maguire, how Jerry Maguire literally after his manifesto, you saw him carrying like his box out to the street. It wasn't like that for me. It was just like they didn't renew my contract, but they signed Peter McKinnon because Peter McKinnon was doing everything that I said that they needed to be doing. Um, I was just hoping that they'd do it with me. But Canon never saw me as a video maker. They never saw me as someone who could make video. Um, so they just jumped on Peter McKinnon and just started pumping him with money. I'm actually thinking about making a video about that whole story, guys. If you guys are interested in me making a video about um, my relationship with Peter McKinnon and how we don't know each other, but... Um, this guy wouldn't be where he is without me telling the people who write his checks like that's what they need to do anyways yeah i'm thinking about making uh, a little bit of a video but let's look at some absolutely incredible street photography so this week's inspiration really one area of photography that i know is not my strong suit is street photography but it's something that i'm actively working on but again, when I'm out and I'm not with a main subject, when I'm not with a main subject, I really find it difficult. I find it incredibly hard. Um, but I know that there's things that I can do actively here in my city in order to make my street photography better. I know the first thing is, go out um michelle thank you thank you so much michelle welcome by the way i appreciate you guys say hi to michelle by the way every time we have new people um giving love we gotta like show you and give you um and say first i appreciate you thank you um every viewer is important to me by the way just a little sidebar somehow i'm maintaining um, mentoring over a hundred photographers and I know them all individually. I all, I know their names. I know where they live. I know the type of work that they do. I know how long they've been shooting, that, what kind of work they want to shoot. And I'm helping them all actively become better photographers. So when you're new and whether you're watching this live or whether you're watching this as a video, join the discord introduce yourself and you're going to be received like you're landing in pillows i have the most supportive like loyal um generous photo community let me give you just a little bit of an example as to how generous my photo community is I have a photographer, her name is Rosa, and Rosa is in America, and she's a mom, and she's got two kids and not a lot of mo money. And what ends up happening is one of my viewers from Europe, um, his name is Bear Thunder, learns that Rosa loves macros, and she's shooting macros, and she's hacking at it with a bad lens. So what? Bear Thunder does is Bear Thunder takes his old macro because he got a new one and packages it up and he ships that lens to Rosa for free so Rosa has a macro lens to do. This is what my viewers do for each other. So when I say if you're new and you're wondering if this is the right hang for you, um this is i think the place where you join the discord and you kind of hang in the discord and really get a sensibility of the type of people that are here um they're good people and uh i love them and i'm incredibly loyal to my viewers because although i might be new for you you might be just seeing me here but i've been doing this program for almost two years we're coming up on our two-year anniversary i just moved my entire system 
to YouTube so I could reach more people. And thank you, by the way, Michelle, for hanging out with us and anyone else who's watching this, whether you're watching it live or watching it as a video, um, trying to help emerging photographers get to the next level. Whether that next level is professional photographer or just better because you're obsessed and at some point you'd like to maybe make money at your ca with your camera. I'm just trying to make great content. That's the whole vibe is make good content, make people happy. And um, I'm putting a lot of effort into my videos. My latest video I'm very proud of. So please take a moment to watch it if you haven't as yet. But back onto my rant with street photography because I, as I said, I, I, I have had a hard time doing street photography and I'm going to show you some of my photographs. Um, this is a photographer which I, first of all, this is my photograph of a photographer. And I was hired by Timberland to photograph this photographer. His name is Bora versus Bora. And I was hired in order to create advertising featuring Bora versus Bora as a photographer. Now, I'm also photographing Timberland clothing but the whole brief was Bora versus Bora is a photographer that you never know his identity. So I was hired to make photographs that they could turn into billboards to advertise Timberland clothing, but also show him as a photographer and hide his identity. So these are the photographs that I made of Bora versus Bora. Now, the reason that I shot him in the streets of Toronto is you didn't expect to shout. I don't think that you understand the kind of stream that you're watching. This is not your regular photography stream. I'm not Peter McKinnon. I actually fucking care about you. Getting into this kind of a job and the reason that i'm using bora versus bora as an example is because the way this guy photographs my city he photographs my city in a way that i wish that i could photograph this city but i have to remember i i have a specialty i'm a portrait photographer i shoot people that's what i do it's what i've been doing for 30 years i'm obsessed of the human connection. I don't get much from shooting um, non-human subjects, right? So that's why I got hired to shoot Bora. But the whole point of me talking about this whole goddamn thing was all about street photography and Bora versus Bora and how this photographer, I'm so jealous of the way that this guy sees Toronto. Bora versus Bora, by the way, his contact is right here. You can clearly see the way Bora photographs. Now I'm gonna have to change my uh, sizing cause, oh yes, that's beautiful. The way Bora photographs my city, it kinda just makes me jealous. And that's just why, first of all, why I was hired to shoot him. And you can see his reach at like 150,000 subs, 150,000 followers on Instagram. But you can see he really started first as like just a street photographer. He started to get into fucking with composites and He's now able, like he's now really doing amazing um, commercial jobs, but his transition from just being a guy who walks the streets and shoots the streets of Toronto just for himself to getting such a reach on social media that he started getting jobs, like that transition was like about five years. But I have to tell you for the first, um, long time there wasn't even a website there was really like no way to get a hold of this guy and the way that he created his hype was it's almost like Bora versus Bora was like a myth 
he, it was like he was this street photographer that would just drop this absolutely drop the needle work and nobody knew who he was nobody knew what he looked like so much like daft punk went out and created a whole much like kiss before them much like um dead mouse and all the people who make a living with their creativity but would like to remain anonymous as a photographer like bora really did it and he kind of did it right so i wanted to share with you guys a little bit of incredible street photography from my city which i think makes it even cooler i hope you guys are feeling it by the way leave a comment while you're watching this is a live stream you guys can talk to me directly and i hope i hope the work that i'm showing you today this is high park this is a place where matt howe shoots how often right so um i hope that the photography that i'm showing you today and the conversations that i'm we're talking about today i'm hoping that it inspires you like the whole goal and the reason that I've you've noticed that I'm really like putting the gas pedal down with my channel is I feel there's a hole in YouTube right now and that hole is access to creators and access access to creators in such a way where we're not lofting them and we're not looking up at creators people who are have um uh, let's say a reach <laughs> per se on social media like we're all validated by our social media and it, it, it's it's hard because i really believe that we should think less about social reaction and think more about the work the work is what gets the social reaction it's not the other way around and in fact if you care less about social media if you care less about how many likes you get on posts and you just create share and repeat for the love of it without without looking outward for validation we don't need to look outward we don't need to look to social media to validate us if we feel in our heart that we're onto something if we feel like obsessed or passionate about something and you post that to Instagram and then what we're waiting like oh my god fuck it's not getting it's not it's not getting any likes and then you're like hey go on Twitter hey I made a new post like good like why do we need validation when we've already done the hardest part which is creating amazing, spectacular work. That's the hardest part. Once you do that, just let it go. Put it on your website and put it on social media and be done with it. Like we can't have emotional attachment to our photographs. Like social media has fucked us up as content creators as photographers honestly social media has fucked us up in such a way because we used to just make photographs like if we were trying to be professionals we would make photographs for clients and to get more clients but now that social media is a thing like we make photographs and content for strangers and 
we actually need to somehow fucking care about what other people think about something that we're incredibly passionate about. When it comes to photography, we need to look and the validation has to be like in the work, like without like strangers. Like what's more important is somebody who you respect having an opinion. That's way more important than a stranger double tapping it or not double tapping it. You know, like, in fact, the whole double tapping and interaction, interacting with photography, it's almost like people just like, you can put your life into a series, a self-directed project, like into photography and still not get any attention from social media at all. The problem with that and what that does is like, it hurts our chest. It hurts our like very beating, it being, and it makes us doubt. It makes us actually doubt ourselves when you put your heart into work, you put that work on social media and you don't get the, the do like looking and seeing like the dopamine reaction for it. Like we get those dopamine hits when we see people are reacting to the work that we do on social media, you know? what's a bigger dopamine hit is getting your day rate, getting hired to make photographs, getting hired to travel around, getting paid to make photography, to make photographs, to do what you love. That's a way bigger dopamine hit. You know what I mean? And, and for me, the only way to do that is to be just obsessed about photography, but where we share and where we're hyper obsessed about sharing, it needs to be more, about just the one house that is your work, which is your website. And yes, you sprinkle it all out to other social things, but the one house, the, that's where, that's the one that you build a bricks. That's the one that you can't blow down. That's the one that Zuck can't social, like, um, can't like shadow ban you or anything like that. You know, like that's where you really put your effort into your website because, <coughs> excuse me. Um, you really get to express yourself there, you know, and um, care with it how you are. Oh, yo, Howie, thank you so much, man. I appreciate you. Julie, thank you. I appreciate you for saying hi. And everybody who's hanging out, I appreciate you all. So, um, yeah, today, really, I wanted to just touch on how in order for us to really um, make a mark, whether you think you have talent at photography or not, whether you have think you have skills or not the only thing that works as far as um making any mark in the world of professional photography is obsession that's the only thing that works and i'm, I'm unfortunately like i'm a little obsessed i wish that i i wasn't as obsessed as i am but um i'm obsessed i don't care about it and the fact that like i'm I'm 52. And do I care about people knowing my age? It's like, why would I care? It's it's fact. You can find it out. Do you know what I mean? Um, how old I am. I just, uh, I'm really passionate about photography, clearly. And um, how he says he's a great procrastinator over 3000 hours procrastinating, I'd say as a professional. Howie, what I really appreciate is um, your humor and your sense of humor and how um, being a, a young dad, being a dad of a young child and um, how much energy that takes from you, how you take the time to watch these shows. You take the time in order to recharge yourself and also take the time to feed your own creativity because you know, even if you're um, a husband, father, um, you're also a person and you also have to feed your own creativity. So you're filled up enough to be able to give back, you know, and I appreciate that about you. Um, Howie is a fantastic supporter. I have a great crew and a great audience and we're growing it every day. I hope you guys are um, enjoying the content. I am very, very, very glad that you guys are all here. All right. It's time 
It is time for your favorite part of my shows. You know how we do. We're doing some real photo reviews. All right. Hope you guys are having a good day. <laughs> Let's get into it. All right. All right. Some real photo reviews. Ah, all right. There you go. That's why. Let's go. There we go. All right. I'm having just tons of fun. Whether you guys are with me or not, I am having too much fun. And I have too much fun during these streams. Like, I live is where it's at. I don't know whether you guys have watched a live stream before or watched one of my live streams before, but live and the whole vibe of live, it, I'm trying, like, I'm breaking the internet. I'm definitely breaking YouTube, giving direct access. How many times has Peter McKinnon gone live? Huh? By the way, by the way, shh, secret time. Why is there no black people on Peter McKinnon's channel ever? No black people on Peter McKinnon's channel in fucking 10 years? What the fuck? Anyways, sidebar. Okay, let's get into a little bit of photo reviews. Last week, I gave you guys an assignment. We do weekly assignments. And my social media slash mod slash amazing julie manages every week to take notes of my shows she downloads my shows like i'm trying to teach her how to edit but one thing that julie does that's super important is every week she transcribes my assignment and she puts it in here in the discord quite beautifully so i am going to read the assignment from last week and it goes a little something like this this week's assignment is inspired by the art of our very special guest, Renee. Last week, we had a very special guest, Renee Robin, on the show. So, if you, by the way, guys, if you didn't watch last week's episode, Renee, Renee's interview, Michelle, Antoinette, um, what type of photography does everybody here do? Hang on one second. These guys are definitely, you guys can talk about yourselves in chat about what kind of photography, but I got to get into the assignment. This week's assignment was all about combining photography and digital art. The task was to create a double exposure or create a composite. The most important rule was for you to shoot the main or all the elements of your composite double exposure photo and share the photos, main elements, background, main subject. So I want to see all the elements and the final result, the double exposure or composite photo. You can submit one or more photos if you wish and um, submit them and deliver them today before now, which is when I'm about to look. So let's see if there was anybody who did this week's assignment. We're gonna look right here in the photo drop. Oh, E-Friend. Oh. E-Friend came in hot. Um, and her, so we have two submissions and um, Starting from eFriend, eFriend says this, I tried multiple exposure for the first time. Let's go. I was inspired by the strobo work of Cardi that I've shown that I shot for Nike. And he shot with the Z7 II 50 millimeter ISO 64 F11 at one second. So eFriend, inspired by my multiplicity project in case you guys aren't aware of just gonna quickly sidebar so you know the reference 
going to quickly sidebar so you know the reference. This is the reference. This is multiplicity. Um, and there's more. There is so much more, but not about me. It is about our man, Efriend. So this is Efriend's first try at this. His first try. Efriend. 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 Holy shit. I know you guys are confused. I know you guys are confused. Don't be confused. Don't be confused. This is fucking heat. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, Efren. This is such a vibe. Like, absolutely, absolutely a vibe. Right off the bat, my friend, this is an 11, yo. Um, I did explain, yes, Efren, I did tell you exactly how I did it. And because it's not a secret. And um, knowledge is free, you know? And even if I share exactly how I did it, it doesn't mean that you're going to make Cardi pictures. And it's necessary for you to execute ideas that push photography into different areas. Let's talk a little bit about the light. The light, because you're bringing your light in radically from the side because you're bringing your light in radically from this way oops can i move that of course it doesn't let me because you're bringing your light in so radically from the side um what's happening the eye is a globe and because the eye looks like this and if you light it this way what ends up happening is you have light on this side of the eye and then you have shadow on this side of the eye. Because you're lighting so radically from the side, you're getting eye shadow and highlight, which you'll see when I enlarge here. So it's a small thing, but what that ends up doing is it puts unnecessary lines underneath our eyes here we can achieve the same look and feel with our light without our light coming so radically from the side. Also, we can have our model look and bias because if you can imagine right now, my light, my main light is just offset. It's just offset here. So if you can imagine because of that, when I turn, I'm now creating that Rembrandt lighting because I'm selectively turning my face and I know that I still have light there. So when it becomes, I'm going to see if I can demo it on this camera. When now it comes too radically from the side. Yeah, you can't see it. It starts to uh, just shadow the face weirdly. You can make this light without having to go oops let's just without having to go that far e friend i'm going to draw you a quick diagram if you imagine your studio the space that you're shooting right now and your model is here and your camera position is here your axis for moving forward and back is here. The model axis is here, right? Your light is, is coming in from here, which is way too radical. You can get that same feeling with the light coming in here and almost here. So try not when you're thinking side light to hit actually from the side in order to truly get that side light look you're actually getting that side light look when your light is actually here and it's a little bit more flattering so multiplicity as an idea 
is dope. I love the fact that you're experimenting. We're still finding our style and you, I mean, you're still finding your style for me, my style and my isms like this vibe with multiplicity. I've been doing it for nine years. <laughs> so <laughs> long exposure photography and this kind of stuff for like the same thing, like almost, um, almost longer. And the, the type of radical stuff that I try to do now with long exposure, like I'm just really trying to, let's go big brother Les, glad you're here my guy. I'm really trying to just break brains with the type of long exposure um, photography that I'm doing. I'm just trying to break brains trying to just not do even when I do um, something that I've done before I'm trying to always just do something different you know and it's weird when I shoot stuff that's not with people I realize that I have a tendency to go a little bit more experimental by the way guys that's my actual brother Les Cardi in, in chat please say hello all right so e friend your first picture, as I said, I'm definitely rating it. I'm giving it an 11. I think that it is absolutely, utterly an 11, without question. So we are going to rate you, give you that 11 off the top. Let's go. Appreciate that. And let's look at your next one. Now, the feeling of motion that you get from this photo, E-Friend, is a really, really great vibe. You can see that there is fluidity. It feels like she's moving, but it's a still image, which is the whole reason that I started doing <laughs> multiplicity is to feel the moving picture within a still frame so steven also my name so i'm going to call you e friend amazing 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 let's look at this as a cover first of all as a cover this really really feels good um i like the movement i like the hair and funny enough e friend I can tell that the light didn't change between these two frames. What did change is the girl's outfit and the model, like in the body position. The second photograph I feel works better because she's now turning towards that radical side light. What the radical side light does is it actually pushes the shadow off the background which you can see just the slightest amount of shadow down here but there's like a nice gradient that you have like dark up here a nice pocket of light here and then dark down here again the fact that the body is like doubling over itself is nice the fact that she that she has her elbows back and her hands on her hips like that doesn't bother me because line wise our eye darts this way through the frame but also in the most basic composition, you can see we have like cross composition, which um, like works really well. It's really dope. Sorry, I thought I was, was I drawing? I can't even see if I was drawing on the right screen. Wow. <laughs> I think I was. Um, and again, the fact that she's facing this way and your light source is here gives her nice light here. But e friend, there's things that Coach Cardi's gonna catch always, dude. You have to clean up this. Like the seamless or the paper that you shot on was dirty when you started, or her footprints went on here. So this is a factor. Number one, the studio that you're shooting in needs to paint their cove, or if you're shooting on paper, you need to cut off that bad stuff because. The amount of time that you spend in post cleaning this stuff, like again, 
every time that you shoot, you have to be thinking about polish, polish, polish. You can't let something go out that you're calling a final that has skid marks on the seamless like that unless it's part of the photo. You know what I mean? Perfect white room, dirty leather jacket, biker looking dude, and there's like dirty footprints on the seamless. That adds to the photo, but for in most case, it looks sloppy. So this is something that I think that you need to make sure that you need to make sure that a the seamless is super clean or b that you're really cleaning this in post and then your first photograph as far as that you can see now as we go down in the photograph because our foot when we're truly looking at photographs i know that most people who don't give a fuck who just uh, consume photography like it's nothing um they're not going to care but for us people who are trying to make a living at photography you can see like look and the, the hard thing is is it's it's actually going through your double exposure so um you see right this to me like uh no it's all good and i know i know um e friend you said that you just shot this and you really wanted to submit all you need to say is like when you post just say yo ju just explain just say hey i just shot these i'm just trying to like get them to you but we have to also remember when we look back at this work whether you're submitting it to me whether you're rushing to get it on instagram whatever the reason is when you look back at it two months three months four months five months six months you don't remember that you were rushing, you were time pressed and you posted that and forgot to fix. You're just seeing like unfinished pictures. Do you know what I mean? So we have to care about, and again, don't feel like it's for me, e friend. It's for you. You know what I mean? We only get one chance to make a first impression. And with your photography being like, so so good and you're like so much on the verge of breaking through and like really making money with your camera when you're this close just have the headspace of like no no nothing goes out unless it's 100 percent finished even if it's just like a quick submission a quick instagram post a quick like share to the client because i'm telling you if you were sharing this to me and i was the client i would think that this is an unfinished photo and even if it's like a proof even if it's just to be like hey here's my favorite from the day here's just something straight off my camera <coughs> the problem it goes back to what if the seamless that you shot on was absolutely perfect what if the cove that you shot on was perfectly freshly painted what if everything that you shot you threw a towel dot down you had every model every stylist wipe off their like jay will tell you how insane i am when i shoot on the studio about my paper because what it's doing is that you're fucking me after like if you put scuffs on that means every proof every proof every proof that the client sees as like this is the work i did today there's a scuff on the paper i mean with certain kinds of light and certain angles like you see it more than others but unless I'm like blowing out the white or doing like a perfect white, you're gonna see that. So I have towels down. You step on the towel, you wipe your feet, you pull the blah, blah, blah. And I, I'll shoot for a bit, cut off the seamless, pull down more fresh, keep going. Like, because after it's in every frame, every frame. So just fix it. Like that's just my mentality, just fix it. Cause I come from the world of photography before there was post. Before there was post, <clears throat> if you shot a, a gray seamless and it had like a kink, like a dink, a little drinkle, because when you were pulling it down, you went, er, and it put like a kink. And now in that perfect 
monochromatic gray you see that dink and then that dink catches the light that lights a shadow now every one of your photos has that shadow and you have to fix it in any final but every proof it's in every proof and that makes me crazy so said that three times um yeah clean the backgrounds before you shoot it saves you after or just know this is what i have to do before i can share it that's all um but by the way they're fucking both dope <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. I'm very happy with you, e friend. Be obsessed, man. Be nuts. Be psycho like I am. Just be psycho like I am. Be crazy. Cause you know, you know it's me, man. You know it's me. I'm you're showing me and I'm trying to help you. So what I'm gonna do is be hyper detail oriented. I'm so visual OCD. I see everything. I see everything. So if you see it in the photograph with your experience and be like, oh, I'm going to see it, going to see it. Because that's how I look at your photographs. I actually look at them. That's all. All right. Let's get into our next submission because it was marked as a spoiler by Herb Ladrillo. Bro brother Les, I know my brother, you submitted some photographs. These photographs, um, okay, so my brother made a composite. So I'm definitely gonna show that. I'm definitely showing that, amazing. My brother um, did 3D rendering and digital art um, in between him being a professional painter and um, being a professional painter. Okay, here is a sports themed portrait this is from our friend Herb Ladrillo, also known as One Dog Studio in chat. Here's a sports theme portrait shot recently that involved compositing, basically adding the boxing ropes. Everything there else there, including the smoke, is from a smoke machine. Okay, so what you added was the boxing ropes. So I'm gonna see these three photos. Okay, so the ropes are in all of them. We don't see the elements. So this is a photo shoot done in a studio with smoke and then the boxing ring. Okay, got it. This is Herb. Amazing. 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 Let's go. Smoke, Herb. Love this. Very, 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 very good work, dude. I love it a lot. So happy that you submitted this. This is definitely fire i hope you feel it and again i know that you didn't shoot this recently but i definitely know that you put your heart into this definitely put your heart into this the thing that i also know is like your lighting and your light placement even if this was six months ago <laughs> come on herb who do you think you're watching bro what stream do you think you're watching, my guy? Come on now. What do you think this is first day? So um, the way that you're placing the light, and again, I see, I see your large softbox. What I would have loved is if you used a gridded softbox, which would have helped you with a little bit of the fall off. But again, you did amazing her head angle meaning slightly that way and not directly at camera what that did was it made that no shadow now not join that shadow which if now she brings her head back towards camera that's corrected and you still have that nice rembrandt lighting she her eyes are tracking just a little bit that way because her eyes are tracking that way you know how we get like that gooey eye if her nose is pointing this way and her eyes are looking that way so one of the things that i say always is our eyes have to track where our nose is so as we look here as we look here so because we're i'm looking where my nose is tracking my eye sits naturally within the space and there's equal white space on either side. Now, if I do that, it's radical for you, right? So we have to be very aware of our eye placement two weeks ago. Okay, thank you. Um, you have to be very aware of the eye placement. So very, make sure like 
you're not giving us too much and also she has like some pretty radical um some pretty radical eye veins that you could definitely fix and also she wears contacts so you can see a little bit of an edge of the contacts there which you can also fix um, the scar on her lip is fine. It looks definitely cool. That side light is definitely giving us like a little bit of line there that we have to be wary of. But your super soft soft box really gives us that nice shadow here. The fact that you have a light coming back here gives us this really beautiful kick there. And also, um, you still you have that same kick like along the arm. It's really, really great. That backlight isn't giving us really radical shadows here, so that's great. And also, the fact that it's nice and dim down here, her hands are wrapped, you can see that, but it's not overpowering. She's got great tattoos. Like, this is unequivocally an 11, Herb. Like, just so good. So good. Let's go. So good. Very, very happy with how much effort you put into your photography. Obviously, there's a little bit of a spacing thing. Her elbow here is not so close that it becomes a factor with going to print, but you can see she's offset here, and then it becomes a little bit more radically offset, which would be okay for a cover, because you can imagine if it's, um, if this is the cover of Behind the Picture magazine, the offset's okay, and then you can also see it really works for copy here, you know what I mean? And maybe some copy here, and like copy here, It's it works, it works. It doesn't, but I just want you to watch that you don't get any closer than where you are right there. Um, and also good headspace for when this becomes an 8x10, because the 8x10 you lose quite a bit of the photo, but because you gave us like really strong, um, strong headspace, it just works. It just works. Perfect. How do I draw a straight line like that? Yeah, it's good. All right, Herb. Very, very happy with that first one. Let's look at another. Let's look at another. This is so good, dude. Herb, this is so, so, so good, dude. So good. Let's go. Herb's coming with the smoke, baby. Yo, very dope, dude. Let's look at this as a cover. Like, this is all I ever ask. This is all I ever ask for, really. And again, the composite being a... um the ropes to make this like it was shot in a boxing gym. Herb, this is the kind of obsession that I appreciate. Now, the way that you brought in this strobe over the shoulder to make it look like it's the light from the ring, to make it look like it's the light from the boxing gym, the way that you use the smoke machine to miss the area, the way that your highlights by the way guys this is photography school level obsession with light this is like the nuance in this photo it, it's so so on point and i want to show you what i mean if you imagine normal and i'm going to invent your readings herb but you in chat can confirm or deny. If this here, this light and the meter reading under her chin is normal, meaning the exposure that Herb is choosing to use. So we'll call this here under her chin normal, right? And if normal is say F8, right? That's his reading that he shoots it on. He also has now, that's his light that's coming here. The reading is taken under here. He also has a light back here that's coming in here that's giving this highlight that exists here. In order for that to appear as a highlight, it needs to be brighter. Secret time. In order to have a highlight not burn out, blow out, and make white people's skin go 
completely white, that meter reading is plus one third of a stop. So the meter reading here is N plus a third. So whatever the reading under here, if that's F8, this is F8 and a third. So the fact that Herb nailed, like literally nailed this exposure, like it's, um, it's actually insane. Like the reading here being, um, oops, let me go back to this. The reading here, normal, if this light is F8, oops, let me F that, I'll bring it back. If this is normal here, right, under her chin, and this is his main light, and this normal is F8, this light needs to be plus a third. And that nuance is so slight. So this is 8.3 or, um, or eight and a third. So uh, very happy with what this looks like. That's obsession, that's obsession. Um, the highlight on the chair, you know, there's so many small nuances and then how the light on the ropes, which is put in in post matches the exposure and the overall feeling, the whole vibe is that you needed separation. You needed separation between her hair and the background and you use smoke for ambiance and you used really subtle hair light without it being overpowering. So for all of that, Herb, let's go. Let's go. Congratulations, bro. That's a fucking fantastic photograph. You should be very, very happy. All right, on to Brother Less with a composite. My brother is an artist and also um, used to make composites. My brother is a painter, a car painter. You guys all know that. My brother's been doing that since he was like um, 20, 18, 19, 20. Airbrush artist since he was like a 10 year old, 12, 15, something like that. So over painting for 20 years, my brother, when he was in his 40s, he got isocyanite poisoning, which is a poison, a, like a chemical that they put into all aerosol paint. So after painting for 20 years, he got sick, almost died. Like, it's so funny. My brother has had a near-death experience a so, couple times. I've had a near-death experience. And all of that to say that... Um, my brother got trained, retrained by the government to do another thing. So he tried, he studied classical animation and um, he ended up not really wanting to do it. And also he's 20 years behind everybody else who's in the industry. So it's kind of hard to restart your career at 40, but um, he learned a lot of amazing skills. But then also they removed all isocyanite out of all paint because there was so there was lawsuits and people were getting sick and dying because of so they removed that chemical from all paint guess what um now my brother could paint cars again so my brother now he's paints cars again so oh by the way from one dog studio um in case uh herb said i nailed his settings <laughs> i'm done Again, um, that's just because I'm obsessed. Because I'm obsessed, Herb. Because I'm obsessed, you know that's why um, <clears throat> that's why I know these things. It's because I've been a studio photographer for over 30 years. So yeah, I'm cracked. <laughs> I'm cracked. <laughs> All right, let's look at some photographs from my brother. My brother says, done for Bravo Fact a few years ago. The comp is done with Maya and a historical photo. The first shot is the wireframe done in Maya. The second shot um, is the th 3D render. The third is the photo. Um, and the fourth is the final render. So this is my brother building out. Yeah, I'm going to show these less in Discord. I think it's easier to show them this way. So this is the comp. 
which is super, super cool. This is the, um, this is the wireframe, I guess. This, no, this is the render. This is the render, the 3D render. This is the historic building that they referred the photo from. And then this is my brother's final render where, um, yeah, he did this basically for, um, and I think it's all animated. So it's very cool, Les. Thank you for sharing that, dude. That's super, super sick. Let's go. Very sick. Very, very sick, dude. Thank you for sharing that. That's amazing. Guys, I'm, um, yeah, it's kind of, uh, <laughs> so going back to our man, one dog, um, Herb is saying that he's, um, he's saying that, um, I nailed his settings. Like I hit them on the dot and he said, it's actually insane. He's sitting here flabbergasted. <laughs> so yeah, Herb, again, um, pressure over time over a lot of years, my friend. And again, I'm super excited. I'm super excited about photography. So for those who asked, as we just get towards the end of today's episode, um, Mish asked um, what kind of photography we all do. I have photographers from all over the world watching as far as Australia, India, South America. Um, like literally somebody's watching me from the Amazon rainforest. Mark Fox, National Geographic level photographer, lives in Ecuador. He's a conservationist. He's uh, like he, Mark Fox. <laughs> so I have a lot of people from all over watching and the range of work goes from macros to portraits to um, drone flyers to um, yeah, it's it's people who are all at different levels of their career that are all trying to get to that next level, which is um, household name, you know, like that's, we're all just trying to make the spectacular, you know, that's, that's the only goal. So um, I don't really, I rarely do this. Um, but for those wildlife, hell dog, I'm so sorry. Hell dog's like, yo, me wildlife, uh, hell dog. Yes. How can I forget about hell dog? Hell dog shooting wildlife. We have um, Sam McRae. Um, who shoots athletes in adventure, mountains. Um, yeah, guys, I, I'm so happy. I, and, and, and bringing this kind of content to you guys just makes me really happy. Um, we're going to take a little bit of a sidebar um, so you guys can watch this. Treat everybody like a superstar. Famous people less like a superstar. I treat famous people like real people. I started as a photographer, I would say professionally, when I was 20. My brother's a fine art painter, heavily influence on me, and I couldn't paint, so when I discovered the camera, it was really easy for me to express myself creatively. Everybody's in the business of glorifying celebrities, so capturing them, it's already glorifying them by photographing them. So if I can get them a little bit more understated, I feel like it brings up the real. In 1997, I shot Tom York from Radiohead, most important picture of my career. In 2001, I shot Pharrell Williams for Peace Magazine. Again, very important picture. Colin Firth, a week before he won his Oscar. Career moving pictures where that picture propels a whole new wave of clients, a whole new wave of people looking at my work. I think. Pivotal career changing pictures are more important than favorite pictures because they're all my favorite. The whole idea is make good stuff and share it and do it every day. that's me it's just so much easier i i would rather show you that than me talk about that um 
Helldog, welcome back. Very glad you're here. Guys, I hope that you guys appreciate this new format. I hope you guys appreciate these episodes. I put a lot of effort bringing you guys the heat, bringing you guys the actual smoke, setting my actual place on fire in order to bring you guys the heat. I hope you guys appreciate it. I'm burning up. My place is about to explode. So I hope you guys appreciate the stream. I might not be here because we're burning down the house. Love you guys all. Seven key steps to making your first dollar with your camera. My latest film, it's live right now. You should watch that next. Thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate you all. Julie wants an assignment, eh? We're shifting the focus, Julie. Julie is begging for an assignment, but we're shifting the focus. There is no assignment this week because the whole entire structure as to how the end of the stream, something that you guys get to work on through the week and show me next week, that's changing. So don't think that that was unimportant. Less, I'm gonna show that on Tuesday. Please know that everything that I do is with absolute intent and on purpose. I'm going to show that on Tuesday because it's not a composite and it doesn't fall within the theme of what the assignment was. That I can look at on Tuesday, cool. Um, what I'm doing is I'm changing the theme from the assignments to challenges. There is going to be a monthly challenge with an overarching theme for the month. There's going to be four projects within those challenge or four challenges. So there's going to be a challenge of the week. You don't have to, but at the end of the month, the person who is the challenge winner gets a prize. They get merch. So there's no longer going to be photo assignments. There's going to be photo challenges. These photo challenges are going to all involve you getting better. Every time you do a challenge, you get better. Then at the end, this is all starting. This is the plan. I'm giving you not the plan for 2023, all right, already. The overarching, if you watch my show for 12 months and do 12, like 12 challenges, and of those 12 challenges, there's four parts to the challenge it is going to be photography school literally i'm giving you free photography school in such a structured way that your progression and again it's a challenge because guess what if you want to know why there's no more assignments because people don't shoot them people don't do them that's why so I'm now shifting how I language it. I'm gonna shift how it's structured and the learning is going to go along the way. They're all gonna be themed and even, even if you just do the challenges from my challenges for a year, you will have a complete brand new portfolio, guaranteed. So I'm changing the structure. I'm giving you guys a break from the assignments, but also, when I give an assignment and two fucking people do it, why am I giving an assignment? Who fucking cares? No one's doing it. If you're not doing it, I'm not doing this to jerk myself off. I'm doing these assignments for you. So two years of trying to get people to do assignments, now I'm officially changing that whole thing. So for the next few episodes, there might not be assignments while I think about the structure. I'm still going to be looking at photographs. I'm still gonna be reviewing. But you guys submitting photographs, look at me sweating. I'm fucking passionate about this. You guys submitting photographs, it's on you. 
Submit if you feel like it. I will look at them. I will critique. I will give you the best input possible. But I'm no longer going to be, oh, please submit photographs. Please do the assignments because you don't. It's frustrating. But if you're not going to do the assignments, what it shows is like you're not ready for someone giving you assignments. So that means shift how I'm giving you the language. And maybe if I challenge you and reward you with one person every month gets free merch shipped to their house just for taking photos, which you should be doing anyways, maybe that will make it so you guys shoot more photos. Anyways, that's me, guys. I hope you enjoyed today's stream. Go watch seven things that you should be doing right now to get your first photography gig. I love you very much. We'll see you guys.